Hi guys, this is Mohan Pover, and in this video I'm going to show you how to have the first best meetings with business owners when you're looking to buy them and how to potentially close a deal within just one meeting. So let's get to it. And yeah, don't forget, if you like this type of content, definitely subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what would be the ideal video for, that you want me to make. And remember, this channel is all about how to buy businesses, how to make sure other run those businesses for us so we can build portfolio of businesses and how you can do that with little money or experience. I'm literally just sharing and documenting my journey, things I'm learning in the process. I've been involved in this space for a while. I learned with pretty much any mentor I could find out there, paid a small fortune to learn from them. And I just want to share my experience, my, my path, and hopefully this could add some value to you. Now, yeah, remember, I'm getting a few emails from people who want to learn how to work with me as well, potentially, and do those deals. Um, there's a way for us to, to work together. We pretty much, me and my team, our company, we're taking a few people to watch our back and, and literally watch us into every step by when we find a deal, negotiate a deal, raise financing, structuring offers, uh, having accountants and lawyers doing due diligence, and obviously then potentially running the business. Um, you could again you need to qualify there's we can't work with too many people but there's a way for you to watch my back while we do deals and literally for you to also get equity for helping us find those deals so if you like to to learn more about that look at the description below and just get in touch so let's start to talk about meetings for us in the deals that we're looking for which are mostly business owners who are looking to retire. So baby boomers, people who are old, kind of like want to retire, don't have children to pass the business to. Many of their children are basically like lawyers, accountants, or, or just doctors, or, or sorry, not lawyers and accountants, that's a, a different topic, but many times like doctors and, and other stuff that they just do for their own passion. Maybe they're artists or a singer or whatever, and they just don't want to run like their daddy engineering company or a construction company. And that's why the business owner is getting to a point where he's just, he got nothing to do with the business. So he's looking for someone he can draw someone who could keep their legacy, keep their, uh, I guess, everything they're, they're built, literally like their baby. And that's the ideal business for us. We're giving those owners like a, a great retirement opportunity. And it's a great win-win scenario for everyone. We're getting a deal at a very fair accounting valuation and they're getting someone who will take over their business and, and make sure the legacy continue to run and hopefully we do whatever we can to, to grow the business and make it even larger. I think the biggest thing to understand with meetings or just with people in general is that people make decisions based on their emotion but then they rationalize things based on their logic. So I want to dive into that a little bit. Everything we're doing in life, if it's to find a friend, a partner, anything, we don't make the decision logically most of the time. We think that we are in control, that our mind making the decision. But the way it works is that we feel something first. So we get to a point, we're meeting someone, we get the nice feeling from that person or the bad feeling from that person. And based on that, based on the emotion that we feel, then the mind is starting to work and is saying, oh, I feel this way, this probably means A. Or I feel bad, that probably means that I shouldn't work with that person. So it's really important to understand that because when you meet someone, you need to come from that frame, from that vibe of, hey, the place that I'm saying those things is many times more important that, than what I say. So if your vibe in general is, and it should come from a very honest and, and good place. If you're coming from a place saying, hey, I'm, I'm literally here, I'm, I'm honest, that's who I am. I really want to help you and, and basically keep your legacy and you really feel that way and believe in that way, that other side is gonna feel that way too. And then logically his mind is gonna tell, hey, I feel trust with that person. I feel like I believe in. And that's what's gonna to lead to a very nice results when you work together. So yeah, let's, let's start with the meeting process. So your goal is obviously to set the meeting, right? So you have, if you watch my other videos and if you didn't, definitely watch them. I showed you how to find deals, how to filter them, how to build some kind of a funnel to get to a point where you only focus on the main deals that you want to close. You only have few opportunities that you really can put all your efforts and focus into those deals. Definitely make sure you have a list of deals you're looking into. You filter them based on your passion, your experience, your, I guess, gut feeling for that deal. Obviously, all the research that you did on that deal, you looked on social media, you built a funnel, then you, let's say, end up, you started ideally with like 100 deals, you filter them, and then you have around 
let's say three to five deals you really want to focus on. So what are your next steps? You want to obviously get in touch with those owners, um, get a set, a set a meeting. Now, the thing with the meeting is, and, and that's obviously ideally depends on how you originated that opportunity. But if you originated the deal, let's say with a lawyer or accountant or any contact that you have within your circle, you want to ideally come with them to the meeting or at least have them help you set that meeting. Just the credibility. Again, remember, we talk a lot about the dream team, the people around you. When you go and meet someone and you have someone who already know them with you or at least at least at the, the bare minimum, he helped you set the meeting. Maybe ideally you had like a short call with them, like three of you together. He's introducing you. You're introducing yourself and there's like a, an immediate bond when you come and meet. It's like imagine you're working with a friend with your friend and then you meet a third person and that person already know him but then he's introducing you uh, it just there's like an immediate bond because he knows hey this is his friend this is my friend like we're friends now right it's just like an immediate thing that's why it's so important if you can have that that accessibility of someone who will introduce you to get to that point where you come to the meeting and it's not completely cold and it's like anything if you meet someone in life who you never met before you don't know any anyone in common again there's nothing wrong about it and obviously probably most of your deals or meetings are going to be from a cold standpoint and, and a, a point where you just meeting someone from the first time but what i'm saying is if you have that opportunity to come from someone it's just better uh, again just think about the, the 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 idea of you coming meeting someone new when you have a person next to you and he's doing an introduction versus you meeting one one-to-one -one person who you never met before they're just a very different vibe. It's going to take you much more time to build rapport versus if you had some introduction before. So if you have that option, definitely get into the meeting or at least do something initially with the phone. So you'll do like some kind of introduction and have like an, an immediate bond. Now, also with calls, again, depends on where the deals, etc. If it's a, so let's say, let's put it into two different categories. If it's a local deal to you that you can eventually walk or drive to, to be that person, Keep that first call really short. Just if it's an introduction for someone, keep it short. Hey, hey, this is Moran. How's it going? I'm this. I helped you. Uh, like I said, he's the person who potentially want to look at your business. Maybe make some kind of an investment or potentially acquire it. And uh, literally, just don't talk much. Just get to a point where we schedule a time and a meeting, and ideally meet face to face. If it's not a, it's not possible, um, then just schedule a longer session on the phone, and and have that opportunity but if you have that option to meet one-to-one -one, it's just always better just again think about the idea of you talking to me right now there's three ways right there's us talking on the phone not seeing each other there's us walking uh, i guess doing some kind of a video conference call like you watching me right now or doing some kind of a zoom call or or a skype call when you have like face to face this is better than just doing a call and the best option is just to meet someone in person just you seeing his, his pupils and, and literally with him in the same uh, area is just always so much better to build rapport it's just like an immediate feeling of who you have in front of you so if you have that option definitely meet in person now if it's in a different location especially if in a, a different country i know many of you potentially want to buy a business in a different country to, to have an excuse to travel there and, and have a, the business pay for it uh, which is great there's nothing wrong about it I'd say if you have a meeting or you, you plan to travel to that other place, at least schedule like few meetings. So don't, don't just fly for that one meeting. Try to have like few businesses maybe in that area and just tell them to send them an email. Say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there at X date. Let's let's have a meeting and then just have at least like few meetings within a few days. If it's not avail not possible, don't do it. And just to go back to that point of a call meeting in, in front of like a camera or face to face. You can close deals in each of those. It doesn't matter. You can do a call, a, a, do a deal just on doing calls. You can do a deal with um, online stuff or you can do a deal face to face. So don't make an excuse that, hey, uh, I, I don't have a good internet connection. I can do Zoom calls with a camera and I can't close deals. It's bullshit. You can do deals in either of those ways, but they're obviously it's just common sense, right? If you meet someone face to face in person, it's just going to be so much easier to build rapport. Uh, but don't make it an excuse of saying, hey, I'm, I can probably can't buy a deal in a different country because uh, I, I can't fly there. I have something else going on and um, it's probably not going to sell the business to me on the phone. 
It's got nothing to do with it. It's got to do with everything behind you. Again, the fundamentals, you have in some kind of a dream team, good positioning. Then if, you, if, if the seller can trust you, and there is obviously a reason to trust you because you have a team around you, you show you have experience, you know what you're doing, then the seller doesn't give a shit if he'll look to you face to face or not. Obviously, when you're going to buy the business eventually, you'll need to be there in person to at least sign the, the agreements to buy the, the business, right? The, the sell and purchase agreement. But um, like you don't need to be there for like 99% of the time. Like you can literally do everything on the phone until you're there meeting them, meeting them and, and signing the agreement. Another really important thing with meetings is that you really need to make sure that you meet the decision makers. And that's come down to your filtering and your initial research Make sure you know who owned that business. And many times nowadays you can find all those things online. But even if you don't, in your initial call, when you set the meeting, ask if he's the only shareholder in the business. And if not, try to bring them, try to bring everyone, all the shareholders to your meeting or call. Obviously, if, the, if he's the majority and he's going to be the person making the decision, it's all good. You can meet just him. And you can even ask that, hey, are you going to be the person making the decision on what's going to happen here or are there any other parts involved and make sure you're meeting the decision maker or decision makers otherwise you're going to waste the time a lot of time i remember when i started i had this call with one person and i i built so much rapport i literally convinced him of everything he was so into doing that deal then i figured i found out that he got two other partners equal partners and i need to literally start everything from scratch with them because he don't have the certainty confident or authority to convince these other two partners I, and I just felt like I wasted so much time and all this could, could literally just uh, not be wasted if I was just asking initially hey are, are you the only shareholders or a shareholder or you have other partners so uh, I hope you you appreciate that that tip because literally that that alone could save you so much time it just you can waste so much time on someone who eventually can't make a decision so it just makes no sense right And yeah, remember, if you like this content, subscribe, comment below, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think is the most important thing in a meeting. And um, yeah, let me know in the comment below. I'd love to see your comments and uh, send me feedbacks. Uh, I, love, I love the feedback on, you, on my videos and let me know what can I do better, what you want me to post on. I'd love to hear that. Another really key thing when you set a meeting is ideally set them in a neutral place. So I think that in any first, especially first meeting, there is someone who's gonna feel more comfortable. If it's gonna be their office, they're gonna feel much more comfortable. If it's gonna be your office, you're gonna feel much comfortable. And the other side is gonna feel a little bit, like a tense. So ideally, just have like a neutral meeting initially. Eventually, when you move forward, obviously, you, obviously if it's, it depends on the type of business, right? If it's online, you don't need to meet like a, the facility and all that. But if there is a facility or something, or employees you want to meet eventually you'll get there but initially just in the first meeting in the, the building rapport phase you don't really need that so ideally have a neutral place so both of you feel comfortable both of you don't feel tense and in my opinion that's the best way to go when you just like start the conversation with a business owner now let's talk about the goal or two goals for your first meeting and i want to keep it really simple so your only focus in the first meeting it obviously depends on where you are, but let's say first time you never heard about this business, first meeting ever, your only goals are one, to build rapport, and second, to sign an NDA, so the owner will feel comfortable to share his info with you. So remember, you're gonna approach a business, a business owner was potentially running that business for many, many years, that's his baby, everything in his life is there in that business. So when he's, potentially looking to share information with you, he need to first of all know you, trust you, and ideally sign some kind of an agreement, an NDA, that's gonna make you, make him feel comfortable sharing that info with you. I'll probably create another video separately just on what is even an NDA. Um, in a nutshell, it's a non-disclosure agreement, but uh, yeah, only two goals, build rapport, sign the NDA, so you can get access to all of his data, all of his information. And, and the process is basically, do the first meeting, build rapport, sign an NDA, receive the information, either a day after or whatever, however time it's gonna take them to give you that financial data and all the other data that you're asking for. And then the process basically looks like that you're gonna get back to him for some kind of clarifications on that deal, on the numbers, on the business itself, just asking questions. 
and eventually after you get all the clarifications and doing more meetings and all that then when you have everything you can make an offer so basically remember the first meeting when you just build rapport to get to a point where he's even open to give you that information and then you maybe have more meetings or more calls until you have all the details that you need in order to make the offer for that business and the first meeting is really about also you just selling yourself selling who you are just go out there be honest tell about you yourself your experience your your track record your team track record your plans for the business just really it's, it's like i said this is like literally a sales process of you selling yourself of the idea that you'll be the best buyer for that business so you need to really show him or feeling even yourself that sense of i care about you i care about your business and here's me here's what i think we could do and talk to you about everything you did before or all the research that you did about, about the business if you research about a specific topic tell him about it hey i saw that you're doing uh, xyz i think that wh why you don't do this or i think you can try this or that did you try that just learn everything you can about the business by just asking random questions and remember in the first meeting you want to be really careful with the question that you're asking so i would just with every question that i'm asking i would even tell him hey i know that we didn't sign an nda yet so if you don't feel comfortable sharing that info with me yet it, it's all good we can sign that nda soon and just tell me if you don't feel comfortable with answering any of those questions and i'll, I'll just stop it's all good and just then just talk about whatever you want talk about yourself talk about what you know from the public that you that you learn about that business then it's like nothing under um nothing that is confidential so it'll be okay talking about that but if you're getting into too much details some owners might feel uncomfortable because you just i guess interrogate them interrogating them into too much um, information that they just don't feel comfortable sharing with you yet but you'll get to that so just try to get a sense of how they feel when you talk to them and always say hey uh, i know we don't we didn't sign an nda so if you feel uncomfortable just tell me and i'll don't worry i won't ask it just you can tell me whatever you feel comfortable and we'll get to the more confidential topics later and another really uh, i guess good positioning or place to come from is you coming from a place of hey i you don't need to tell him the owner that but you need to come from some kind of an abundance and remember if you're coming with what i suggested is like come for with at least three five deals in advance that you have in mind you should come from a position in that basically telling or asking him hey I have all those deals that I'm looking at. Why do you think your business is better? And that's your mindset. That's what your, your attitude should be. There are many businesses like you, but I'm just one buyer. And it, it's just true. There are so many deals out there. So you should really believe in it because it, that's, that's the scenario. That's, that's life. Like there's so many deals out there. When you talk to them, you need to really have that vibe of, hey, I have abundance of deals. I really want to understand why this business is better than the others that i'm looking at and then when you come from that positioning you won't be i guess that you the owner even won't feel that desperation from you and then it just the negotiation is going to be so much smoother because it's just going to come from a, a very honest place and and yeah in the first meeting again just build rapport ask about their story ask hey how did you get into this business when did you start this business why even that sector why and, and you'll see business owners and, and i guess anyone in life they like to talk about themselves and in those meetings especially you want to talk only like 20 percent of the time and let them talk 80 percent of the time and you, you'll see people just love to talk and it's fun this is the point where you really need to enjoy this part guys i mean this is so cool i remember when i started having calls with business owners or meetings with business owners you you're gonna learn so much about business in those phases like this meet this first meetings and after that obviously when you get more confidential stuff but really enjoy the process the fact that you can get access to data that no one else probably in the world know about about this specific business like maybe just his accountant and lawyer know about that stuff like those owners those owners wives are not going to know as much as you as the potential buyer so really enjoy it. those people are really passionate about their business they can talk about this forever and you just really i guess um what's the word i'm looking for i don't even know but that really put yourself out there to to let him feel comfortable sharing himself and really enjoy it like this is the best opportunity for you to learn about business and this is what i really like personally about this 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 life of of being a business buyer it's the fact that you can be involved in so many sectors and industries and learn about so many different types of businesses and just be there fully and learn about them and just 
grow yourself that way. And for, for me, just uh, it's awesome because you can be involved in so many different things. And I mean, that's, that's all good. In everything else in life, you got to really be focused. But in this specific area of doing deals, you can be all over the place with all sorts of different deals. And for me, I just find it awesome. And this is the time to learn as much as you can. Obviously, again, be really, uh, have a really uh, an understanding of if he's comfortable sharing those things or not. And I guess I could create a, a, a video later about that on what specific questions to ask about the business after you sign the NDA to really understand the business. But initially, just ask generic questions about the business. Hey, how do you get customers? What's your revenues, profit? Those things maybe you won't be comfortable sharing, although lots of those things are in the public data already. But just ask whatever generic questions you have in mind about the business hey who are your main clients how many clients you have how do you get those clients it's, you know everything you can ask about the business just that's the time to ask as well now another really key thing to understand at this stage already is why they're looking to sell their business and how fast they're willing to move so this is a time to really understand if the owner is really motivated to sell the business if there is a legit reason for him to sell the business to you or someone else, or is he just looking to explore the market and see if there is a potential buyer who will pay in premium for the business, which again, if, if you're that type of person or looking to pay that, it's all good. But for me, when I'm talking to business owners at this stage, just like figuring out, are those guys really serious about selling their business or do you just like trying to figure out if someone will pay, pay me my dream, uh, I guess, uh, price or like everyone have a, a number in his mind of amount of money he wants in his bank account so many of those business owners just say hey I have a potential buyer let's just throw him a 20 million dollar price because that's the number I see in my bank account let's see how how he responds so you really want to understand is this person looking for like a crazy exit price or is he just a, a I guess just want to sell his business and looking to get something fair that is just really the value of the business which is all good but he's not going crazy with his, his numbers or, or dreams in mind. Now, I really want to emphasize the fact that I said that, yeah, you want to go in there and say whatever you learned about the business and potentially how can make it better, but never judge what he built so far. Remember, this is their baby. Be really, have some kind of understanding of the situation. Don't, don't judge them, tell, hey, you should do this or that or that. And even if you have feedback, there's a, a really good lesson that I learned that if you want to give feedback on anything in life, always start with the positive. So if you want to give something like some kind of criticism, first start with the good things in that person or in that business. So go and say, hey, I saw that you do X, Y, Z. It's really awesome. I really love how you do A, B, C, but, and that's when your criticism or feedback starts, but I think you should do this, this or that, or did you try to do this, this or that? And then when you start with the positive and continue with your feedback and ideally end with another positive, then, I mean, everyone will, accept those type of feedbacks versus if you just go out there and hammer him with hey you should do this or you should do that always show him hey i really think that you're doing this amazing but what do you think about this and that did you try that or you, you should you should try that and that's how you're going to bring yourself out there and everyone is going to take that feedback and just learn from it and take it in a good way so yeah this is pretty much what you need to know at this stage set a meeting Ideally, have a reference to get to, to those meetings if, if it's not a cold uh, reference. If it's cold, it's all good. Set a meeting, go out there, build rapport, share your story, ask questions, and get to a point where you sign those NDAs. And we'll get to it in a, vi a future video. You will also dive into what exact questions you need to ask in order to really learn about the business. And many times, just the type of questions that you're asking are going to position yourself as the expert. Like, all you need to do many times is just to ask the right questions in order to be perceived as someone who already have the answers to those questions, which is going to make you look like the experts. So yeah, go out there, sign those NDAs, build rapport with business owners, and, and let's move forward with those things. If you remember, if you like this uh, channel, subscribe if you didn't yet and like the comment, like and comment, comment below. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know who you're going to have meetings with or who are you looking forward to to do meetings with, what type of businesses, what would be the ideal business for you to own. And yeah, just give me any feedback you want, what type of videos you like. If you like this type of video or you want me to do something completely different, maybe what I was thinking is maybe even doing different angles or just going to different places in my office or maybe even filming outside. I don't know. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your feedback. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time.